This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and call this a sort of five minutes on tech. I know the title might seem clickbaity, but that's really what this is about. The new NVIDIA RTX equipped mid-range, upper mid-range to high-end gaming laptop just started shipping at the very end of January 2019. And if you've seen some early reviews and even some user benchmarks and that sort of thing, you might say, gee, the numbers don't look that good. There's something wrong. RTX is just a bust. Well, it's not about that. And honestly, I wish the manufacturers had talked to me before they did what they did, but they thought they were doing you a solid when they did it. See, the problem is in 2019, for the first time, we're seeing mid upper mid-range to high-range gaming laptops shipping with single-channel RAM, one 16-gig module. Now, the manufacturers thought they were doing you a solid by doing that because last year in 2018, RAM prices went through the roof. Whether that was cartel pricing or if it was really true that smartphones were eating into the RAM market, whatever it is. Anyway, so they figured that you enthusiasts out there would be thrilled if you didn't have to throw away what they had been using, which is two 8 gig modules, which creates dual channel. And you could just keep your 16 and then someday, because we keep upgrading our RAM over the years, you could just throw in another 16 gig module and be pretty happy, right? Well, that hasn't worked out so well because surprisingly, about four or five years ago, dual channel became a thing. Dual channel just means two RAM sticks instead of one, basically. It's as simple as that. Anyway, that became a thing because it improved performance, and particularly for Ultrabooks, things that use integrated graphics. The Intel GPU that's integrated really benefited a lot from having dual-channel memory. But a lot has changed since then, and now pretty much everything is dual-channel, whether it is your Ultrabook or it is your gaming laptop, ships with dual-channel memory. But now a lot more programs are actually making more use of it than we might have realized. And games, actually AAA titles particularly, are a lot more advanced software-wise than you might think and give them credit for because they really are making heavy use of dual channel memory. And that means basically instead of just shooting processor instructions out to one memory chip, well, here's a memory chip, it can shoot them out to two of these at the same time. So CPU runs about two degrees centigrade higher, by the way, if you are in dual channel mode. So that's why things are faster. So particularly, this is the case for open world games that are pretty graphically intensive. So we're talking GTA 5, we're talking even The Witcher 3. We're not talking so much more GPU intensive games than the latest DirectX 12 titles that are doing DLSS and ray tracing, which is like Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There you'll see a five frame jump in performance if you have dual channel versus single channel. But if you're talking about something like The Witcher 3, and you can see the side by side on screen, we're talking 20 frames per second difference. And all of these are at ultra on 1080p. Now, and the comparison is between one 16 gig module versus two 8 gig modules. So we're talking the same amount of RAM, just single versus dual channel. If you look at Far Cry 5, seriously hits the CPU a lot, which makes sense. These days you've got six core CPUs, make, make use of them, right? There in the benchmark, you can see a 35 frame per second difference in the performance. And even in actual real gameplay, seeing between 25 and 35 frames difference per second. So, oh my God, that's a huge difference. And this accounts for why you're seeing some RTX gaming laptops that came out looking a little eh. Now with the desktops, not so much because most people are taking an existing desktop where they probably already had dual channel or even quad channel RAM there and they just swapped in a new GPU. So we didn't have any of this changing in the configuration of RAM. By the way, like I said, this is a 2019 16 gig single module issue. This is not anything to do with RTX. And obviously between 2019 and 2018, we're still using the same Intel eighth generation six core CPUs in these gaming laptops. So what does that tell you? You can even find benchmarks on YouTube if you look, take a look at it. This isn't generationally dependent. So if you're looking at a core i7-7700 with an GTX 1080. It's the same situation. It's just that last year, everything shipped with two 8 gig modules instead. So you never knew that this was an issue. Now, when it comes to battle royale kind of games, ones that are not really very graphically intensive, i.e. the graphics are kind of primitive, sorry, but they are like PUBG and Fortnite, you're already going to get really high frame rates. So whatever, it doesn't matter as much. Now I tested Apex Legends and even running on insane mode there, which basically is ultra, 
at 1080p settings with single channel RAM, I was hitting the max refresh of the display. It's 144 hertz display for our test unit, and we were getting around 144 frame, frames per second off and up. So less important there. It will depend somewhat on what kind of games you're going to play. Now, when it comes to the difference in synthetic benchmarks between single and dual channel, a lot of that's going to have to do with how GPU versus CPU intensive it is. For example, Geekbench is obviously it's a CPU test, so yeah, dual channel, you're going to see a significant difference there. When it comes to 3D Mark tests, uh, Firestrike is mostly GPU dependent, but it does hit the CPU a little bit. So that's a 9.9% .9 improvement by going to dual channel. Time Spy is a 12% improvement by going going to dual channel. Port Royale, which is really pretty much just testing the new ray tracing feature in RTX cards, is only a 5% difference. Skydiver, which does test the CPU quite a bit in addition to the GPU, there's a 25% improvement by going to dual channel RAM. Now for our test system, we use the ASUS Republic of Gamers G703GX. That's this 10 pound beast right here. So why did I use this? It has a 1080p 144 hertz display, so we got plenty of room to raise those frame rates up. It has is a pretty OP laptop. It has a Core i9-8950HK. It's an overclockable mobile Core i9 CPU. It has the NVIDIA RTX 2080, the full mobile RTX, not a Max-Q. And we have a really fast NVMe SSD in here, and it happens to ship for $3,500 with one 16 gig RAM module. You're not even getting 32 gigs for $3,500. By the way, we will be reviewing this big honking desktop replacement OP laptop. So yeah, and on this, it's very easy to pop open the bottom door and stick a RAM module in or take one out. So very easy to test with. So what does this mean to you? Uh -huh. Asus MSI Gigabyte Dell with the G series gaming laptops, G3, G5, G7 are all doing this right now. They're shipping with one 16 gig module. And if you go for a really low end laptop in the gaming laptop spectrum, $1,000 and under, you're probably only getting eight gigs of RAM. Nothing has changed there. So that would be a single eight gig. But for those manufacturers right now, what you want to do is either put a RAM module in yourself, which is usually pretty easy, and go up to 32 gigs. Games don't really need 32 gigs. 16 is perfectly the sweet spot. 32 is not going to help, but if you're using it for pro app stuff and video editing, it will, or if you want future proofing. Or otherwise, if you're ordering it from, say, Cuck USA, they've been supplying a lot of our review units. In fact, they were asking me, why, why are we seeing such mediocre game performance? Because they care about the stuff they send to you. And they don't want you to return it either. So places like that can actually swap out and give you two 8 gigs if you don't really want to go all the way up to 32 gigs. And there are other, you know, the usual suspects that sell gaming laptops online and will configure them to order. But like I said, it's also pretty easy to do it yourself. And now that RAM prices have come down, you can get a, a 16 gig DDR4 2666 megahertz module for around 100 to 115 dollars. So it's not a huge spend. The only laptop where it's just really hard to get to your RAM is the MSI GS65 Stealth Thin. With that one, you actually have to take the motherboard out and flip it over to get to the RAM module. So either order it from one of the places like Cuck USA and the other usual suspects and have them do it for you, or go with the 32 gig option. The 32 gig laptops have two 16 gig modules. As long as you have two modules, you have dual channel, you have gaming joy. I'm Lisa for Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.